getting on to our second round tour because this was some this was a guy that people or science fans wanted him at 25 and we got him at 57 so I want to know um film breaking down what do you like from uh John Michael Smith what's his best asset and uh are you worried at all about him going on to this next level I'm not worried about John Michael Schmitz. Now, I don't know the if he has Pro Bowl or uh, maybe not Pro Bowl, but all pro upside. I don't know if he's going to step in and be like a Travis Frederick was for the Cowboys when he was drafted in the first round. But I think John Michael Schmitz is going to be a long-term starter here for the New York Giants who doesn't really have any glaring weaknesses. Now, his, I wouldn't say he has the athletic ability of some other centers around the NFL. But you want to talk about efficiency in terms of his footwork and how he uses his hands, his ability to reach block, his angles, and all of those little things. He masters that part of the craft. And I think he is an above average to actually, I would say, a good blocker already in terms of run blocking at the NFL level. I think he has to prove that. So I'm a little bit reticent to actually say that. But I think he has the capability to step in and be a good run blocker in year one. Doesn't mean there's not going to be mistakes. There's always going to be mistakes. One of the things Bobby Johnson loved about this guy the most, and this is something that is a little bit hard for us to be privy to on the outside, but it's how intelligent he is. It's his ability to understand fronts once they change right in front of him and how he can adapt on the fly. And also in pass protection, how he understands where blitzes are coming from, what players are doing, and kind of just keeping the offensive line all on the same page. Reportedly tested very well, according to Bobby Johnson, in terms of his mental processing. But I don't see a lot of glaring weaknesses with this player. Doesn't mean he's not going to lose a couple reps. I think he's better as a run blocker than he is in pass protection, but he's fine in pass protection. Can he reestablish himself when he gets high? Yes. Can he refit his hands and fight counters off and keep his feet active to stay in front of his assignments? Yes, he did all of those things well. He wasn't really bitched all that often either, Jake. There was a couple plays. I think there was one against like Illinois where I saw him get tossed to the side. And that was like the only play I actually saw that. Now, if you watch the Wisconsin game, he struggled a little bit against Keanu Benton who was a top, I think, 60 pick in this draft class. And that was probably one of the worst games I saw of John Michael Schmitz. But other than that, I didn't really see all that much bad tape. I had like a whole synopsis written up. I posted it over at Patricia Trainer, Patty Shakes' uh, page over there, um, Giants Country, if anybody wants to check that out, about just some of the strengths and the weaknesses. But overall, man, I just think this is a, a player who has a high floor, who is going to be a good NFL starter for you at a position that I just feel like the Giants have neglected to find a long-term solution at for quite some time. They were just rotating, you know, tackle, undrafted tackle here. This guy's going to play one year here. Okay, he's gone. John Halapeos, Nick Gates, who I like. But I think John Michael Schmitz offers more upside than those types of players. And hopefully he can be the anchor for this Giants offensive line for years to come. Yeah, um, I seen a, an interview with Bobby Johnson. He said one of the things, well, you mentioned it, but you know his intelligence. But uh, he said he asked him a question in the in the in the process, you know, in the recruiting process. He said, "Well, what happens when a veteran uh, dismisses your call, your check, and they had their own? You know, they think that their checks are better, or something of that nature that they was asking." And his answer was, well, I will then let that player know that I do understand what he's saying, but I need you to trust me in my checks and my calls that I'm going to be able to get it done. And I have to prove that. And I have to prove it to the players that they can trust me in that. So just to know that he re- realizes these things and that he's a natural born leader, that's what you have to be at center. I think, yeah, it's a big thing. It's big, huge. Also, the... Oh, absolutely. And and the background in wrestling is always a big thing for a lot of people who cover the NFL. You know, I want my center, my offensive lineman, my defensive lineman to have a background in wrestling because that means they mastered the art of how to manipulate an opponent's leverage and use their body against them, essentially. I mean, we saw Dalvin Tomlinson, who was a really good wrestler when he was younger, do that time and time again, still doing it in the NFL. Unfortunately, not for the New York Giants. John Michael Schmitz, he was a wrestler. And you can see that on his tape, too. He understands how to manipulate leverage, how to win the leverage battle, and how to, even if he gets high, reestablish the leverage, which is something that I'm mainly looking forward to. Right? That means like, hey, my hat got a little high throughout this rep. 
can I resync my hips, replant my feet, and then absorb that contact as you're exploding low to high into me? And those are things that I saw him do constantly throughout his Minnesota tape at the Big Ten.